Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm so glad you're with us wherever you are. If you're joining us locally here on television in Santa Barbara, California, or elsewhere at TVSB, uh, we welcome you. And so many of you join us at goodlifetelevision.org or at the YouTube channel. And now over the last few months, we've developed this podcast platform, which lots of you are finding from all over the world, which has been great to see. Good Life Conversations is the name of the podcast. So any of the podcast platforms you're at, you can search for that. And of course, we're we're on all the social media, most of the social media platforms, so you can follow us. But we're we're talking about the good stuff. We're talking about the, you know, we get to choose what we dwell on, and and that's one of the things we always talk about. So we've had some great people, and we have a great one today. Um, and I'm so excited to welcome Ariel Fernald to the program. Ariel, welcome. Thank you, Dean. It is such a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's, it's a, an exciting time. I was at a dinner party last night and I was talking with a lady and she, she was, ta- I, I, I don't know if this, this is just me or what or us, but I, I, there, it seems like a really interesting, challenging in some ways, but also exciting time to be alive, you know, to be able to do the work um and of course a lot of the work that that you do and focus on i just think is so needed and i was reading this morning about you know that esther passage you know that you know and and there was a meme that i pulled up and it was like you know maybe you were born for such a time as this you know that and i and i think about that often is you know it's not an accident that we're here now you know, God Absolutely. knows, God knew we're here now for a reason. So anyway, that's, I don't know why I just gave you that sermon, but. Well, anyway. I, I love that little sermon that you just gave me, especially since one of the, uh, the next writing projects that God has put on my heart is, uh, incorporates the story of Esther in it. And that really? is, really, and that's really the message of it, which is all of us realizing that we are born for such a time as this. And we can so easily disqualify ourselves from the call that God has given us. But the reality is it's that it's not about our ability. It's about his ability to do what he can do through us and us just being a willing vessel. So I love what you just shared. (laughs) Oh, perfect. Well, that's a great way to start. Well, just by way of introduction, um, Ariel's a Bible teacher, a university professor, a playwright, a script writer. She's been an award-winning writer and producer. She speaks uh, publicly as well as being the president of the Eastern Sky Theater Company, which we're going to talk about, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, she's, she's uh, as far as education, Chapman University and Pepperdine University, and there's a whole there's five pages of resume here, but that's the essence of it. <laughs> um, so I'm just really delighted to, to have you on and, and to talk about this. But let's start kind of going further back, kind of your upbringing, where you came from, kind of what were the what was impactful in your development as a person? Well, I think that the most impactful uh aspect of my life was really family from the very beginning. I grew up in a wonderful um, Christian home, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And I don't think there is such a thing. Uh, We're all growing and learning, but I was blessed to have um, two loving parents. And it was very unusual as well. I grew up in Mission Viejo, California, and I am the third oldest of 14 kids. Oh, yeah. I have eight brothers and five sisters, all the same parents, and um, they were very unique. They not only uh, decided that they wanted to have a large family at a time when that wasn't what people were doing anymore, but they also came from two cultural um, backgrounds. My dad um, was from Houston, Texas, and he's African-American and Native American and some French. And my mom was born right here in Bakersfield, and she was um, French, Irish, Dutch. And uh, they met in international club at Chapman University, my alma mater. And so they, um, but they raised us up to be a family that loved God and knew the value of service. And so I think that really had a great impact on me growing up, just knowing the importance of those values, the importance of family, the um, 
and the value of community of working together. It was always a sense of, you know, you don't do anything on your own. Um, you need people to do it and uh, people need you. And so that had a great impact on my life, I think. Wow. Well, that's amazing. If you, yeah, that's like, uh, these days they'd make a reality TV show. They have cameras in your home if you had 14 kids. <laughs> Same well, parent. I'll tell you, the first person that, that uh, I knew that was a filmmaker, and he's actually over at Disney at a certain point in my husband and I's life, he was like, oh my gosh, we've got to do a reality show. We need your dad. I said, absolutely not. That man is past the age of having any filter whatsoever. <laughs> he doesn't so, care anymore, so you can't put him on know. TV. I don't know if you realize that, Dean, but there is an age, and I haven't yeah. gotten there yet, but I can't wait, where I just feel like, oh, whatever, I'm just going to say whatever's on right. my mind. Well, I think I that can't. Uh, no, that's so exciting to get to that point. <laughs> right? So he yeah. was there. And I said, there's no way my other <laughs> siblings will kill me if I put that man in front of the camera. <laughs> that is hilarious. Are they still in Mission Viejo or where are they? Um, no, actually, both of my parents have uh, gone to heaven at this ah. point. But my siblings um, are all, except for one, still in this great state of California. Uh, we love our California here. And um so we are, you know, we're not all in Commission Viejo, but still in the state. Wow. How do you get, that's, a, how do you keep track of them all? No, people like, would always ask me growing up, like, do you know all the names? And yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're my siblings. Um, and then do you know the birthdays? And we used to get tests all the time about it. It was like, okay, do you know the middle names? And then they'd have us run the test. But, you know, you just don't know any different. I don't know any different. You know, it's, it is my, it is what it is. So in my house, when you have 15 people at, uh, I had a quiet Thanksgiving, super quiet, just at my home. And, and um, there's a few friends that normally don't even celebrate Thanksgiving because they're from out of the country. So it was only 15 people. For me, that's like a <laughs> tiny gathering. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. That's amazing. So talk about your husband, Trey. I know you, you worked on this project. Uh, you partnered together um, a lot. But talk about your husband, Trey, how you met and kind of uh, that partnership. Well, um, I'm... I would say that when you said we work together a lot, absolutely. We do every, we're one of those couples that at this point in our lives, it's almost like we seem like we do, you know, 80% of what we're doing together. Um, but it's, and it's a wonderful time, uh, a wonderful season for us to be in together. Uh, we met actually at Chapman University. We both went to the same uh, college. I came in a year before he did. So, um, I'm nine months older. We joke around about that, you know, um, but we, uh, we met at Chapman and we just became friends, great friends. And then a great story behind that is, is that I always knew and wanted to go to England. I always wanted to go to London and I didn't know how I was going to get to do it. And then here comes this opportunity at the university for this London theater study program. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to go. Well, they gave it to the theater majors at the time uh, to have the opportunity first. I wasn't a theater major. So all the slots got filled and I'm like, what is happening here? This is my destiny for such a time as this. I'm a chapman. <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm just like, what is happening in the universe? Well, long story short, uh, come that was set up in the spring. So come to the fall and I'm in the registration line. I walk into Trey. He's just a friend at the time, just really good friend. And the professor there, uh, Michael Nearing, says, Trey, you're the head of the Performing Arts Society. We've got one slot open. And how are we, how are we going to decide who gets to fill this slot? The whole school's going to go nuts. Everybody's going to want it. And he turns and he said, her. And he points to me and he said, she's the one that needs to go. So that's how I went on this amazing adventure and opportunity to study theater in London with my husband, who wasn't even my boyfriend at the time. But at the end of that trip, we were dating. <laughs> wow. So that's our, that's the story of how we kind of came together. And now all these years later, we have um, been able to do ministry and, and theater together. Uh, we started out 
um, doing a lot of things independently. Uh, we always had a love for the a love for people, serving people and the church. Um, and then we, uh, so we were kind of independently in what we were doing. And then we were given the opportunity to work together on several projects. And they always ended up being around the arts and different uh, topics. And um, ultimately we ended up starting Eastern Sky Theater Company together. And he is the artistic director, I'm the president. Um, and we have been just taking stories that share the, the love of God, that encourage people in their lives, that bring hope um, and guidance. And we have been taking those stories and we bring them to stage and to film and, and now starting into books. So good, so good. I, I've been... I've been introduced to kind of this world of theater and, and these stories by the fact that our third daughter is an act, an actress and oh, wonderful, incredibly passionate and amazing. I'll say she's truly gifted and incredible, but this was a little bit, I was raised kind of three boys, all sports, you know, it was all sports all the time. And, but I've been introduced to this world of theater and the power and the impact. And it's really been a wonderful experience for us uh, because there is so much good that can come out of that storytelling, if you will. Can you talk about a project uh, that that has particularly stuck, uh, stuck out to you as, as a really impactful one? Well, the first project that uh, comes to mind always is our project, The Last Appeal. And this particular project is one that um, started as a theatrical presentation and then moved into being a, a film opportunity. And it was, it's amazing because it is set on death row and it's five men on death row and them really coming to terms with their mortality. But it's not just about men on death row. It's a human interest story. It's about them and their families and how God is moving um, in their lives. And it's really a story where we're able to see that the hardest of hearts that have made the gravest mistakes, they can still find salvation in Jesus. Yeah. and They can still find great purpose and meaning in life, whether and that and it helps us to see that each of us can be behind bars in our own lives, in our emotions, in our relationships, um, yep. in faith. It's it's not just a physical state. Most of us put ourselves in jail um, and in ways that have nothing to do with the building that we're in. And so it offers a message of freedom uh, to individuals. So we, this particular one, my brilliant husband wrote, he is an incredible playwright. And um, I feel so blessed to be able to write alongside of him and share uh, in this, this journey. Uh, um, we always say that it's so great because we've got the male female perspective on things and humor that we're able to, to work with, but, but God just writes so beautifully through him and in, particularly in this project. And it's one that we started out touring. We toured all over Southern California and we literally got to the point where we're seeing thousands and thousands of people receive Christ, um, and also give up unforgiveness and issues that they were in bondage over. I mean, Dean, we saw people's marriages restored. We've seen people give up unforgiveness for uh, individuals that have killed their children, uh, people that were in human trafficking. They were trafficked by their parents, give up that unforgiveness and be released of it. We've seen uh, just incredible miracles, really, through the power of theater. And the opportunity that we have to sit and take in that story and allow God to just work on our hearts while it's happening. And so it's just that play has been incredibly impactful. And then to be able to film it and put it on platforms to be used, we've brought been able to bring that into places around the world we never thought we would be able to get to. Oh, 
That is amazing. The last appeal. So where can somebody where can somebody find that just in just in case they just want to go look at it? Well, we right now we're on a lot of different platforms from Tubi TV to Amazon to Up TV. But the easiest way to find it right now is Deep Sea Digital has somehow, I don't know how these things work. You can go actually go on to YouTube and put the name in and it will come up. And that is a beautiful way to be able to not only see it, but to share it. You know, I would really want right. to encourage people to share it um, with the people in their lives that they love and also to share it with prison ministries as well and um, and youth groups and, you know, wherever you can. We've we've been able to see some neat things happen there. Oh, that's yeah. I mean, that, that's what could be better. I mean, I I think about that all the time. What could be better than helping people get set free? I like how you put it. We're all we can all be behind bars to something. You know, mm -hmm. I've been there actually, and I understand that. And the and man, if you can be part of the God setting somebody free, God getting somebody, you know release from unforgiveness that's like the only game in town i mean that's <laughs> that's as good as it gets it is i'm telling you it's a it's a it's amazing to stop and realize how much of the angst in our lives you know is from not being at peace with god or not being at peace with ourselves or with other people, sometimes that unforgiveness that we're holding on to is against ourselves. You know, I've been in that place where I've been so angry with myself for making a poor decision that I, you know, I remember at times thinking back and I'd literally physically cringe when I think, oh, I can't believe I did that, you know? And so having myself in that prison, you know, and not trusting ourselves because we've made a poor decision. But this film, it really does have just the hand of God on it to be able to help people to see that that is our frailty and humanness, but he's so much bigger than that. Yeah, so good. So that's the last appeal. So I would encourage people to check that out. It sounds like you can go to YouTube and you'll be able to find it. But the last appeal, that's a, a powerful project. Let's talk about uh, bringing back Christmas. Oh, okay. So bringing back Christmas is um, just been a joy this year for us to uh, to be working on. Bringing back Christmas also has a message. It's a message of hope, and it is a film that we will be rolling out next year. We have a few special screenings um, that are happening uh, to couple in Texas this year on the ninth and the tenth. Uh, we'll, the ninth we will be in um, in the Houston area at the Ark Church, and oh. that is a big, beautiful church that is um, is hosting us so that some of the community and our cast and crew are able to come, and we will have some cast members there uh, that will be answering, or that will be at that, that location, and then the following day on the 10th, we will be at Crossroads Church, and that is in the, Ur the Grand Prairie area, yeah. and that's where we'll have some of our cast as well. So this is not true that the premiere of it, but it is special screenings that we're doing this year and an opportunity for us to just um, share with the community uh, and give uh, people an opportunity to share their thoughts on the film that we may use in marketing next year as it goes out. So bringing back, uh, bringing back Christmas is starring um, the amazing, Mark Christopher Lawrence and Lee Allen Baker. And uh, they are just so fun in this. It is a story about a man who is like many of us who has gone through, uh, he's going through a tough time. It's Christmas time and he wants it to be the happiest time of the year. And he's thinking that he's about to get a great promotion, but instead he gets laid off and his entire department shut down. And because of the wonderful prayers of his wife and his kids, um, God intervenes and sends him uh, not just one sassy angel, but she's got a, a little bit of a band with her, a few few of her friends as well, to take him back in time to see what Mary and Joseph are up to and look at some of the challenges they went through. 
So that's that's all I'll really tell you at this point. When we get closer <laughs> to the film, maybe I'll come back on with Trey and we'll talk more. But it's a lot of fun and it has the message of hope and encouragement. Oh, it's, I can't wait. So that'll be rolled out in 2023. Yes. Uh, so people yeah. will be able to see more about that as we get into next year, right? Absolutely. And what we're hoping to do over this time as we're rolling it out is just really get churches excited about it and um, to have churches be theaters with us, you know, so it's not just in theaters, but actually churches will be able right. to have it at their church and have special screenings there um, for their people and really make it an event for the whole family. Yeah, that that's, makes a lot of sense to have churches involved with with projects like this that, that can have an impact. That's that's fantastic. Well, it gives us a chance to outreach. It, it is a, it is an opportunity to outreach. It is. Um, is our friend Ryan O'Quinn, uh, is he involved in this project or not? Yes, he is. And I know that a lot of people have seen Ryan O'Quinn in most recently in Paul's Promise, where yes. he did a phenomenal job. Wonderful. Um, playing the, the lead in this and a much more serious role. But the fact of the matter is, if people don't know it, Ryan O'Quinn is a hoot. He He's hilarious. Is so hilarious. He's hilarious. Yeah. And he is absolutely hilarious in this. Uh, he plays Mary's father, who we've never seen before. But you're going to want to see him as Mary's father because he is right? every wow. person's quirky parent. Like, Dean, didn't you have at least one parent that is the quirky parent? Oh, you know? of course. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah. So, in, in, um, in this, we get to see those quirky parents come alive. I love it. Now, yeah. if it's not your spouse, it's you. So I think I'm the exactly yeah. that's the scary thing as I look at it. And I honestly think <laughs> both my husband are going to be quirky parents, <laughs> quirky <laughs> grandparents. <laughs> okay, so Ryan O'Quinn is plays Mary's father. Yes, he does. He's oh, I can't does. wait. Ryan O'Quinn is, is one of our favorite people in the world here at Good Life TV. We and Heather, not just because she bakes cookies that are like world class, but just they are <laughs> like they are like the, the world's best people. So we're huge fans of Ryan and Heather O'Quinn. So that is exciting. Now is yes. Dean Kane, is Dean Kane part of this? Dean Kane is in this, and he also is has an opportunity to uh to play a humorous role, which is fun. Um, I know a lot of times actors that are in real life or that are a lot of fun, like Dean is as well. They're, you know, they're playing more serious roles, but we um we said no, we want we want your silly, and <laughs> we're using it. <laughs> so he's also just great in this, just great. Oh, and so uh, yeah, Dean's a wonderful guy and a wonderful, obviously wonderful actor. Um, well, that's exciting. So, uh, bringing back Christmas 2023 will be in theaters. Uh, very exciting. And then uh, the last appeal you want to check out. So, I, um, I'm just thinking, just in, reflect for a second on your life and just obviously god's gifted you it seems like a lot i mean some people i don't know how to say it i'm not and i don't mean it when i'm talking about this i don't mean like there's some kind of ranking system but some people you know just in certain areas of gifting just hit the mountain really high it, it seems like in your you know as you've developed here that god's really gifted you with a lot what is, how do you want to spend the rest of your life? If you had to summarize and this, I wasn't planning on asking you this, but wow. you know, <laughs> how, like, what, how do you want to spend with I, I, Susan, my wife, Susan reminded me the other day, you know, just light, we are, we are just a vapor, you know, this thing, it is like, it's it, to me, I'm for some reason right now, I'm just impressed with the truth of the matter, which is, wow time is short. You know, we don't have, we think we have all this time, but we really don't. I mean, we, and, and, and we're just a vapor. We're like dust in the wind, you know, how do you want to spend the rest of your life? You know, I think if I were to sum that up in one statement, um, I want to love God and love people. Well, I think that's, I think really when every thing is said and done yeah. at the end of the day 
we never ask ourselves, did I accomplish this, you know, or right. lay on our bed and say, did I make more money? Did I, you know, it's what was the quality of the relationships in our life? And I think yeah. that starts with our relationship with our maker and then to the people that he put in our lives. So my greatest goal in life is to be a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one thing I can't control. <laughs> right, right, right. No, right. I, I really have no control over anything. But I mean, I have the least amount of control over that. But um, I, I really do. Like a lot of people, I think they're like, oh, no, growing old and all those kind of things. But I, I treasure the idea that one day I will be able to be a grandmother and see my children. Um living a full productive life and loving on their own kids and getting to spoil them and give them back and, you know, not have to do the hard work right. <laughs> right. to be a parent. Although it's uh, what is that saying? I see on posters. Um, it's the hardest job you're ever going to love is being uh. a parent. And so um, I want the easiest job that I'm ever going to love, which is to be a grandparent. Right. Right. <laughs> I can't, I'm looking forward to that myself. Yes. Yeah. I had, I had, I said it on a previous show, but I, I had a, a mentor who, you know, would talk about becoming a grandfather. And he said, there's something about becoming a grandfather where you start to feel like you're going on forever. You know, wow. the, the, those generation now, now it's like, okay, the, the, the generational thing, the generational impact, the generational mm -hmm. opportunity, um, is obviously great and and the family you know i could do we could probably talk for a whole show on the on the based on what i know about you based uh, about the family how important the family is you know um in our society i mean i just don't i don't think there's anything more important than the family you know oh, just, i agree with you absolutely yeah. i think the family unit and preserving the family unit right now is really has to be at the forefront of all of our minds you yeah. know and and even in the sense that i love i love my extended family i love my brothers and sisters very much and all of my nieces and nephews and i would do anything for any one of them to support them and to love on them and yet at this point in my life i'm also in a place kind of what you said dean and feeling very aware of the fact that the where I can really have the greatest impact and that is my own children and my family unit my husband and I and our kids and what is God you know need me to do to really strengthen them and undergird this family and steward it well with my husband so that we are are um just living into what he all that he has for us and what he's called us to do so so beautifully said and that's so important and i think some of us like me learn learn that the hard way you know i think sometimes and i think somebody somebody like you i can put picture this maybe could be a challenge some some people who are you know have a lot of ability or gifting that it could be so easy to skip past your own family and go well, i've got to go out there and change the world you know i've got to go out there and but but keeping the main things the main things is like critical. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it is something that I, I absolutely can relate to in the sense that when you are involved, especially in certain types of work, you know, what, and we've been involved in two of those, um, one of them being ministry. Well, actually I wouldn't say three um, minutes. I would say the areas of our life have been ministry. They've been the arts and they've been education. And all three of those are areas where it can be difficult for someone to not remember that the first thing is your family unit. You yeah. know, sometimes as an educator, you have a ton of kids. And so it's not you have your children at home, but then you have the kids at, on the campus um, that you're concerned about. But your children at home have to take priority when you're yeah. in ministry. The same thing, you know, pastors talk about their congregations and the, the flock that they have. Well, their most important flock is their family. Right. Um, and the same thing in the arts, you know, artists can be off making great art, but then where's your family? So we always have to remind ourselves and go back to those things and um, 
ground each other. My husband and I at, at different seasons will have to say, Hey, 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 like you're so focused on this, but yeah. we need you here, you know? Right. So it is something to be aware of. Right. No, I think that's, that, that's a great reminder. Wow. Well, we're out of time, but I can talk to you all day. Um, it's so <laughs> wonderful. So great. Yeah. Oh wonderful to meet. Yeah. Wonderful to meet you. I feel like we're, we have a kindred spirit and, um, and with the work you're doing um, in all these different areas is powerful and wonderful. And, and we didn't really even get to talk about the great Biola University, but we're big Biola University fans. So that I know the, the work you're doing there is having that lasting and, and ripple effect kind of impact. So thank you for everything you're doing. Oh, thank you. And I just am so grateful for the opportunity to be uh, here and just to connect with you. Um, yeah. personally, I've so enjoyed watching the show. Um, I think it was maybe a year ago that I found The Good Life, I literally stumbled onto it. And I love how you are presenting just those things that we're we're all called to focus on. There's things that are pure and lovely and a good report. That's and, right. Uh, we need so many more shows like this out there. No, so thank you. thank you for the opportunity to be on here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Give our best to Trey. We will uh, we'll be friends. Absolutely, absolutely. Next time we'll be in the same room. Yeah, imagine <laughs> that. We'll, we'll, we'll get tea. That's <laughs> right. <a> <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Ariel. Thank you for coming on for everything you're doing. God bless you. God bless you, Dean. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>